I'm willing to bet that most of us have a piece of broken furniture that's hiding in the basement or in a closet somewhere. Maybe it has a broken drawer or a broken leg or something and you tell yourself you'll fix it one day. But every time I walk by this table, I think about how long I've been telling myself that I'm gonna fix it and maybe I should just toss it at this point. I mean, look at it, it's kind of a piece of junk. It has all these scratches and deep gouges and it's gone all orange looking. But the real issue, I guess, is that it only has two legs. And even those are looking pretty banged up. Not sure what happened to the other two, but it looks like they broke off at some point. Now, my dad's been asking me to build him a folding table. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm gonna try and salvage this one. I'll build some new legs, refinish it, and see if I can turn it into a folding table. All right, let's get started. People always ask if there's a quick way to refresh old furniture. Truthfully, no. The best option is to strip down the wood and refinish it. It's not as hard as you think. It just takes a little time and a little patience. Here I'm using 80 grit sandpaper and as you can see it does a quick job of removing the old finish. If you can take the hardware off so you can access all the surfaces, it'll make the process much easier. I'm actually going to take this table apart then rebuild it with folding legs. I'll start by stripping it first then get to work on the legs. After removing all the hardware, I noticed the aprons were simply screwed into the top and therefore I could remove those as well. I have a small concave profile on the aprons, so I'll use this contour sanding grip. You can grab a set of these with varying diameters, which will make contour sanding much easier. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check those out. After that, I'll finish the flat surfaces with my orbital sander, then strip the bottom side of the table as well. As you can see, this is so much easier once the table has been broken down into parts, and with all that orange finish gone, I'm feeling much better already. Once I'm done stripping all the surfaces with 80 grit, I'll inspect the surfaces to make sure there aren't any visible scratches or gouges left in the surface. Although I have really bright and ample lighting in my garage shop, it's hard to see imperfections from this angle. If you really want to see them, grab some shop lights like these ones I got at Princess Auto and set them off to the side, just above the surface of the table. Then turn off the overhead lights and take another look. It'll make all the nicks and dings much easier to see, so you can then fill them in or sand them down further as needed. I had a couple larger holes that couldn't really be sanded down, so I used some of the sawdust from the sanding of the table itself, so it would be a perfect color match and mixed it up with a little glue to form a paste and make an improvised wood filler. Now that I have a nice flat surface, I'll switch to 120 grit and sand every single surface again. It always helps to make pencil marks first so you'll be able to gauge your speed and avoid going over the same spot more than necessary, and ultimately end up with a nice even sanding. After that's done, I'll repeat with 180 grit and then stop there. If you're unsure what grit to sand to, it's usually indicated on the label of the finish. So when in doubt, just refer to that. With the sanding done, I'll move on to making some new legs for this table. It's going to be coffee table height, so the legs will be relatively short. That being said, I think thicker legs than the original ones will look a lot better for a coffee table. So I'm going to double up some 2x4s and make some beefy legs. You'll notice I'm using 2x4 pine studs for this. If you want, you can buy S4S pine that's already squared up on all four sides, but instead I'm going to run each piece through the planer until both sides are flat. I can then glue the pieces together in pairs. When I first started out, I made the mistake of not using enough glue on an outdoor pine bench I made. Eventually, after several years, the joints began to split open. So now, let's just say I'm a little more generous when it comes to the glue. I'll get the clamps on, and tighten them all down, and let it dry overnight. The next day I can remove the clamps. That's better. 
I'll use my joiner to flatten one of the glued joints and make it perpendicular with the adjoining face. I can then rip each leg to its final dimension, keeping the squared up reference edges against the fence and the table. That way the legs will be perfectly square. Last but not least, I'll cut them to length using my miter gauge. You could also use a miter saw instead. Nothing screams DIY more than perfectly square edges. Trust me, I know from experience. Now I don't want to go crazy either, so I'll simply use a chamfer bit to make a small chamfer on each edge of all four legs. I'll start with the end grain, which is more prone to tear out, then finish with the long grain edges to clean it all up. Okay, back to the tabletop now. Remember how I removed all the hardware? Well, I'm going to need something to hold the frame together, so I cut these small blocks that I'll use as connectors, and then I'll drill some pocket holes into the aprons to connect them together. With that done, I can start reassembling the table. I'll start by screwing down the aprons using the original screw holes as a reference. I can now insert the corner block I made, but I need these inside corners to be perfectly square for the legs, so I'll need to remove a small notch. Over at the table saw, I'll carefully cut a small rabbit. Perfect. All right, time to move on to the finish. Just to recap, I've sanded everything up to 180 grit, including the legs. If you work in a small space like me, I find it helps to do all the sanding one day, then clean the room and let the dust settle overnight. Otherwise, I find that the dust is more likely to settle into the finish if you skip straight from sanding the finish. I'm using Osmo Top Oil to finish this table. It's a hard wax oil similar to Pollux Oil, which you've probably seen me use on several projects, but it's designed specifically for countertops and tabletops. I'll also use an Osmo Fleece Applicator to get a nice even finish. Just make sure to remove any lint before the first use using a little tape. The application is super easy. Just pour onto the fleece pad and rub it in. You'll notice how white the color of the product is. That's because I chose the natural color that won't yellow like other clear finishes do. I've always wanted a finish that wouldn't alter the color of the wood and I think I finally found it. I like to start with circular motions then finish off with even strokes going with the grain. The best part is that it's low VOC and you can get the finish done within 24 hours. They recommend applying two to three coats at least eight hours apart. You can store the fleece pad in a bag in the fridge so it won't dry out between coats. Before applying the next coat, I'll lightly sand using 320 grit, just enough to remove any dust nibs. then wipe away the dust using a tack cloth. I can then apply the second coat just as before. I always start with the bottom of the table and then finish with the top. Like I mentioned, this table is going to have folding legs. I found these folding leg brackets on Amazon and I'll leave links down below. You basically push on the little lever to unlock them so you can fold them. 
It's kind of hard to demonstrate without the parts attached, but you'll see how it works in just a second. I've never used these before, but I'm hoping they'll work with the leg butted right up into the corner. I'll secure it to the table and to the leg after first drilling pilot holes. Nice! Looks like it works. Now, despite the fact that I had measured and calculated everything, I wasn't surprised when I realized things didn't work out as planned. They almost never do. But luckily, this is an easy fix. In the end, I was able to make this table look like new again and give it a second life for a fraction of the cost of a new table. Good for the environment and good for the wallet too. I know it's just pine, but I really love the natural finish without any yellow hues. Links to all the products I use can be found down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.